evolutionists have many tactics uh, to, to try to prove that they're right and that any hint of design or creation uh, is wrong. But is there some sort of a, a sequence in which they try to deny or to point away from the validity of what, what we say? I like to think of it as an open secret. Okay. Because they don't necessarily publicize how they're about to do it, but they follow a common pattern. Okay. It's a refutable pattern. Okay. So it's not something they want people to know, yeah. but they follow it every time and it's not that hard to find it. And I think it can lead to great success for creationists if they know the sequence they follow and then know how to respond to it. So it's an open secret. This is something that the viewing audience can actually use to address these issues when they come up. If they're trying to witness to a skeptic on the street, if they are trying to talk to a, a, a fellow college student or a colleague at work, they can actually benefit from this information. Parents, grandparents, they have students going off to public school, students going off to college, absolutely should know what their students are encountering, what they're gonna hear in the classroom, what they're gonna come home with, Mm -hmm. and say, here's why I don't believe the Bible's true anymore. What are parents going to do in that situation? This is what addresses the relevant tactics that evolutionists use, the arguments that they make, and how to deal with their counter-arguments. Yeah. To me, the, one of the best ways to, to engage people is not necessarily just to contradict, but to ask questions. And that makes them think, and I don't know, as uh -huh. the opening uh, person on the street there illustrated, I don't know. I'm not sure. I yeah. don't have the answer. Yeah. Well, the next, the next step they'll typically take then to prove their case, especially if it's a student with a, a strong sense of I'm right and my old fogey parents are wrong, mm -hmm. is, well, there's just so much evidence for it. All the evidence supports evolution. We've just learned through the textbooks, all these scientists saying this, this is the evidence for evolution. Okay. And the problem with that is, so what, what, what can a parent or grandparent say in response to that? The evidence hasn't changed in 150 years. Right. What has changed is the responses to it. And what we've discovered over time is all the evidence for revolution fit creation equally well. So take homology, the, the structure of, for example, my, my forelimb here. It's one bone, two bones, set of bones, and digits. Mm -hmm. You can find that, that same structure across various species. Mm -hmm. Evolution, say, must be evidence for evolution. Okay. Well, human engineers design vehicles, right. as a common example, with all sorts of similar structures. That's not due to evolution. Mm -hmm. What we see in nature fits design as well. And that's just one of many examples where whatever evidence they come up with, it fits a design perspective equal to, well, I'm sorry, that's not evidence for evolution over and above creation. It doesn't disprove creation. It's, it's irrelevant to the debate. You can't use it to adjudicate it. So now we're, now we're two steps working backwards from mom and dad, you're wrong. Grandma and grandpa, you're wrong. Okay. It's, okay, yeah, there are things I don't have answers to. Yes. And Which is an honest approach. Yes. Yes. And... That's the way science works. You're always trying to discover new things. So, and, and the point isn't necessarily to, to knock them off their feet no. with it's impossible. It's just, oh, oh, oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's I'm not as, strong as confident yeah. as I thought exactly. I was. Exactly. And, and again, I mean, I think really it all boils down to a confidence in things that are based on old ideas. Because the more science progresses, the more discoveries, would you say that they're leading closer to a realization that everything appears designed or farther away? The evolutionists will admit that life looks designed. Richard Dawkins, okay. leading atheist, will say, biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having design. been designed for a purpose. He knows it looks designed, but then wants to explain it away. Okay. So, and they'll do it by saying there's all this evidence. Sorry, it's impossible. The evidence is, isn't clear. Now, what, well, now what's a student going to do? They've just been imbibing from a professor, from a teacher for a semester, for mm -hmm. a school year. Well, how could they be wrong? How could all these scientists be wrong? Yeah. And I would say not only is the evidence pointing towards design, but the arguments are sometimes logically self-contradictory. And this is one of them. Okay. It's an intimidating argument. How could all these smart people be wrong? The reason it's contradictory is because it applies equally well to Darwin in 1859. Okay. If you're an evolutionist in 1859, all the scientific community is going to come to you and say, why does no one agree with Darwin? Yeah. He knows this. And so if we want to say that consensus, lots of smart people, determines right and wrong, what's true and false, well, then we reject evolution in 1859, and we've got a totally different discussion. Wow. So we've just taken a student from, in a few short minutes, yes. of boom, 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 from 
mom and dad, you're all focused and you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about. Hold on, let me, how do you explain male and female? Mm -hmm. Did you know that all the evidence fits creation? And are you aware that Darwin had to change the consensus as well? Mm -hmm. Now what? And now, now we're at the last resort, the, the long-standing technique that's enshrined in federal law that okay. is the reason creation is not taught in schools. Mm -hmm. This is ultimately what evolutionists will come back to, the secret in a sense that's open. It's the idea that creation doesn't have something better. So, so if now the cherished idea has been poked full of holes, yes. what are you going to do? Uh -huh. Well, you don't have anything better. Until you have a and in technical terms, what's been put in federal law, 1982 court decision, this was an Arkansas law that mandated teaching of creation science mm -hmm. alongside evolution. They said no, overturned it. And the reason they gave was science has certain characteristics. Okay. One of them being it has to be falsifiable. So gravity is a scientific idea, accepted as scientific, because it makes predictions that can be, in theory, proven to be false. So if okay. I, I have this pen, if I let go, uh -huh. and it starts levitating, yes. then we've got a problem with gravity. Okay. Or I'm playing some magic tricks. Uh -huh. <laughs> Either one of the two. But scientifically, gravity predicts I let go, it falls, which of course it does. It's it does. a valid scientific idea. It's been done over and over again for decades. It's observable, it's repeatable. The law of gravity we talk about. Yes. Because it fulfills those criteria. Okay. So evolutionists say, you creationists, forget trying to criticize evolution. Mm -hmm. You can do that all you want. Easy for you to say that. Mm -hmm. Not fair. Until you give us something better, you don't deserve a seat at the scientific table. Okay. Give us something falsifiable. And you can see this in, in, from, from quotes from the 80s, quotes from, the, from modern era. So there, here's a guy from... Yeah. Uh, 1982, Niles Eldridge wrote a book, The Monkey Business, mm -hmm. Scientist Looks at Creationism. He's a famous paleontologist, mm -hmm. uh, studies fossils, and said, creation science isn't science at all, nor have creation scientists managed to come up with even a single intellectually compelling, scientifically testable statement about the natural world. Hmm. Strong words, but it's that common theme of give us something that we can right. do what we do with gravity. Yeah. A prediction that future Destiny. observations could reveal to be false. Okay. Here's, a, here's a, another quote from 2017, that the most recent edition of Douglas Fatuma's evolution textbook. Mm -hmm. So it would have been used when I was an undergraduate for a third year biology major course. So you're, you're studying biology, you're in, you're in your junior year, you've got to take an evolution course, they'd probably use this textbook. Uh, if you look in the 1950s at evolution textbooks, they don't yeah. really teach students how to combat creation. Apparently, creation's made enough advances. Right. Now they've got a whole chapter saying, here's how you deal with those pesky creationists. Wow, okay. And this is what he says. Here's the last resort, the open secret. Here's what you've got to go back to. Mm -hmm. He says, the most important feature of scientific hypotheses is that they are testable. Testable. Gravity is testable. Yes. Give us something testable. And he says, of course, creation is not. So therefore, we can just end the discussion, full stop, no need to progress further, we're gonna move on with studying evolution, because that is a scientific idea that makes testable predictions, they would say. Okay. So, that's probably, if the student's well-trained, by yeah. the professors, and they come home to mom and, mom and pop, grandma and grandpa, here's why you're wrong, they'll resort to that. Okay. They might, it might take a semester, hey, professor, I went home and mom and dad said this, and mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do, well, here's what you need to tell them. Yes. <laughs> it's probably what they'll be instructed in. Uh, and there's, there's Two things that sort of add a, an edge to this okay. recommendation from the professors. Yeah. One is the sad evolutionary history mm -hmm. of meeting their own standard. We could first ask the question, does evolution make testable, testable predictions? predictions? Does it say things that future observations could reveal to be false? Right. And most of what Darwin has done and evolutions have done ever since is, after the fact, look back at certain types of evidence and say, well, this fits evolution. Okay. They're okay. not looking to the future. So right now, before I let go, it's still future. Yes. Now tell me what's going to happen. Gravity tells me and predicts it's going to fall. It's going to fall. Evolution, to be scientific, has to say, here's what we're going to see. Okay. And you don't generally see that. That's not the evidence for evolution. Here's a prediction. Yeah. And if you look at the history of those brave evolutionists who've tried to put in print certain things that Very future true. observations mm -hmm. could say, yay or nay, mm -hmm. uh, it's not as rosy as they might Presume. No, it's not. One example would be in the realm of genetics. So evolutionists have, uh, I think it was Ernst Mayer back in the 60s said, we know from evolution, the fossil record, it's just gone on for eons of time. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for so long, we can't even wrap minds around it. So as we do genetics, it's gonna be pointless 
to look for DNA in humans that's shared with butterflies, let's say. Okay. They've, they've been separated evolutionary for so long, their DNA is going to have been changed and mutated to oblivion. Mm -hmm. So different, forget it. All right. So this is something, this is a future prediction. Prediction. In the 1960s, looking to the forward to the future, before Which is we great. had, yeah. That's great. That's what science is about. What it should do. Okay. <laughs> then along comes scientific research, the March of Progress, mm -hmm. and we discover that mice and fruit flies have a similar section of their DNA that encodes eye development. Okay. Shouldn't be there according to evolution. Uh -huh. Well, I found out about this whole story reading an evolutionary book on the science of evolutionary developmental biology and how the shared DNA between mice and fruit flies and any other creature you can think of, that now shows up in textbooks as evidence for evolution. What should have been wow. the falsification Yes. So if this levitates, now, now we've got a problem now with gravity. Now we've got a problem, yes. It's essentially this levitating and saying, well, that, that's evidence for gravity. <laughs> it's falling and it levitating, that's evidence for gravity. It doesn't work. You can't work. have it both no. ways. No, but this is, what's, this is what creationists are held to. They dominate the discussion. They say, give us a testable prediction. Mm -hmm. And to me, the strongest rejoinder to this mm -hmm. comes from, I, I can attest to this personally, comes from what I've witnessed just in the last few years. 